Hey you, good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue, this is Bill. Hi. <laughs> and we are here in Growing Zone 6B in New England. It's the first pickle of the season. Are y'all ready? What are we pickling, you might ask? Cherries. These I scored super cheap on sale at, of all places, the grocery store, they're Washington cherries, um, and they are delicious. Hey, are you that guy that tastes one in the store? Cause I'm the guy that tastes one in the store. I have been wanting to do a balsamic pickled fruit. We had, um, we put some cherries and some balsamic reduction on some vanilla ice cream. Might've felt like the luckiest girl in the world. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on in the kitchen today. She's got a whole bunch of stuff going on. I've got a handful of peas that need to be blanched. A little head full because it's a pocket mm -hmm. harvest. And I have chicken stock that I boiled down yesterday. I'm going to put that in the pressure canner. And um, yeah, let's do it. Come on along. I have the soup here, the stock that was boiled down. Um, it's probably four or five carcasses. But boiled on the stove all day with peppercorns and bay leaves. And then in the last hour, I threw in some onions and carrots and celery and we'll have a nice basic stock. Right now I'm gonna get the fat off the top of this um, as much as possible. And I'm gonna warm up my pressure canner and get that ready to go. The great defatting. This is definitely my least favorite part of making stock. This is gonna take me a minute. I'll meet you back here. Got my broth defatted um, with the aid of a plastic bench scraper and this huge bad boy. Ooh, she big. Um, got just over four quarts. So what I'm gonna do is put the whole thing on the stove to simmer so that we can pressure can the majority of it. And what's left over, I'm just gonna put into like little cup or two cups. Um, freezer containers and pop those in for some other time. This stuff in here, this is seasonings, flavor, um, all the, the little bits at the bottom. That's good stuff. It's the fat at the top I like to take out. This is pretty jiggly in here. Um, that is normal. It's collagen from boiling it down over a long time. Uh, That's the good stuff. This is why people drink bone broth, right? We got that in our stock. I have about six and a half, seven pounds of cherries. Um, and the recipe that I'm working from works with one and a half pounds of cherries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to quadruple this recipe. I'll link to the recipe that I'm using for the brine, but I'm gonna change a few things. What I'm going to keep the same though is the acid and sugar content. Super important. Um, the vinegar that I'm using is 6% acidity. 6% acidity. You cannot pickle in anything less than 5% acidity unless there's something else going on in the recipe. So important, make sure that your vinegar is at 5% or better. I'll start off with four cups of sugar. I'm gonna use brown sugar where she used white sugar, um, and that's okay, that's okay. Sometime last summer, Mike introduced me to a balsamic reduction that he had made. <gasps> Lorgasm. 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 Which was mostly like, I think it's a one-to-one -one really good balsamic vinegar and brown sugar and then you simmer it on the stove until it's the right consistency and oh my goodness wow so good i've been trying to find a good recipe for balsamic pickled fruit ever since y'all this is a ton of sugar um i've got three cups of light brown sugar gently packed um and then i ran out of light brown sugar so the last cup um i used some turbinado like sugar in the raw stuff now we're gonna add some other things we need eight cups of water, three cups of balsamic vinegar, 
The original recipe calls for a big piece of orange peel in each jar, as well as coriander seed and black peppercorns. These aren't flavors that I'm, I'm totally attached to, so I wanna play around a little bit. Definitely gonna use the black peppercorns, a few of those in each jar. Freaking love a black peppercorn and sweet things. Got some bay leaves, I'd like to put a few of those in each jar. Um, and then, I have three different things. I have a couple of star anise, just like maybe two. Um, I have a handful of cardamom pods and I've got some dried cloves, dried whole cloves. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try out some different flavorings with these. Um, I don't know about the cloves. The cloves? Cloves might be a lot. Let me see what that's like. Gonna go very light on the ones with the cloves. Got my spices lined up here and I've got four times the original recipe amount of brine. And I think, I think we've actually got maybe a little extra brine. You know, I got out a dozen jars just in case, a dozen pint jars. I always overcommit some jars, but I rarely run low. So I'm gonna get this up on the stove and bring it to a simmer. It's gonna simmer about 10 minutes. I've got my chicken stock going on the other burner, so I'm gonna start pulling my jars out of the dishwasher and we should be packing this stuff up. Let's see what this tastes like. Mmm. 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 That's gonna be really good. That is not dissimilar from Mike's reduction. Um, the flavor is a little less bold, of course, because it hasn't been reduced. We're gonna simmer this for a few minutes. It may change. Are these just not the most darling little jars you've ever seen? These are pints. I like these for fruit. I put applesauce in them last year. So we're gonna put our cherries in these today. I put about a quarter teaspoon of, um, yeah, maybe half a teaspoon of black peppercorns in each of these. I'm also gonna put a bay leaf in every one of these. The star anise, I just don't have that much of it, so that looks like two jars worth. One, two. I'm gonna put three cardamom pods in the next handful of them. The cloves are very, very strong. I'm only gonna add two of them to these jars. Cardamom here, we did clove here. I'm packing them in there about as tightly as I would pack cucumber pickles. Just don't want them to float. I can tell you with absolute certainty that it is going to be super important to debubble these before we process them. So we've got two, four, six, eight, ten pints of cherries. I'm going to add my hot brine to it now. I want to leave about an inch headspace, so I'm going to go up to the bottom of the ring here. I think next time I do this, I'm gonna do a little less brine to the cherries. Um, I think I could have gotten away with three batches of brine rather than the four batches of brine. There's quite a bit left in the pot. Remember that for next time. Probably write myself a note on the recipe. Debubbling time. There's a fair amount of bubbles coming up in these. So we'll get to use a little bit of that leftover brine. I'm really glad that I'm not seeing these float. It's not as pretty when the fruit floats. So now that I've debubbled, I've got jars that need a little bit more. So luckily we have plenty of that brine left over. And I'm gonna bring it up. Well, that's more like a half inch of headroom. What is the recipe? Oh, well, the recipe says a half inch, so we'll be fine. The other thing that's super important before I get these into the water bath is I'm gonna wipe the rims down with vinegar. And there's just, there's a lot of sugar in here, y'all. There's a lot of sugar. There's more sugar in the brine than there is vinegar. And when that is the case, sometimes these rooms can get pretty gunky. All I'm doing is giving them a nice wipe so to ensure a good seal. These process for 10 minutes. 
Okay, so the recipe um, says 10 minutes, but she's using half pints. I am using the full pints, so I'm gonna give them 15 minutes. Wow, oh my gosh, next time I do this, I want to do a rosemary cherries. I'll just put a sprig of rosemary in there with the black peppercorns. Oh, what do you think, should I do that? Just finger tight, so as far as you can get it, um, like a half turn more. Don't do them too tight. If you close these too tight, you stand a really good chance of the lid buckling and all your food going everywhere. Oh, hey, don't forget to forget to label. We're boiling. You hear that hissing in the background? That's the chicken soup in the um, electric pressure canner. Let's see how many fit on the bottom and if it'll be possible to do a second level. I think my pint jars are gonna be too tall to do a second level in here without everything bubbling over all over my stove. So we're gonna do these in two batches of 15 minutes. I'll see you in a few. If you let the pressure canner come down to room temp all on its own or close to room temp, it reduces the siphoning. When you release the pressure, cause you're in a hurry or you wanna do another batch now, I wouldn't know anything about that. The pressure change is what causes your jars to siphon. A quick note on siphoning and headspace. The reason that your jars siphon is because the liquid is pushed up to the top by the heat and or pressure. You might be pressure canning. Um, so what we're trying to avoid are temperature changes. We also want to make sure that we have the correct headspace so that when it does boil up in the canner, it doesn't boil up high enough to spill out the top. Um, so that's why you want to pay attention to your headspace and how fast you cool stuff down. You'll see some people who swear by putting a blanket on their jars as soon as they take them out so that they'll come down to room temperature more slowly. And that's supposed to uh, alleviate siphoning as well. Some recipes will tell you to just turn the canner off and leave it for 10 minutes before you remove your jars. Um, that will also improve your not siphoning rate. <laughs> um, but basically you just don't want to shock the jars because if you shock the jars, that's when siphoning happens. Science y'all. Now I know. Want to see what siphoning looks like from the water bath canner? This is cool. Okay. This towel is now officially in the club. Um, my nice cool air conditioned kitchen is much cooler than the inside of that pot. My jars are reacting a little bit. I just heard my first jar ping. I have Mike coming over in a little while. We're gonna do some baking together, so I'm gonna have to leave you here. Thank you so much for hanging out while I pickled cherries today, and I'll let you know how they taste in three weeks. We'll catch up soon. Take care. I've got this on low. Uh, this is the rest of that brine, which was the balsamic and what else? There's balsamic, there's water. Oh, there's water. I forgot about the water. I'm not gonna cook this down. I'm actually just gonna toss this out. <laughs> Comes a time. It's more wasteful to use the energy on the stove to boil that down than it is to toss it out. I'm just gonna, bye.